The Smithsonian Museum, founded in 1846, is the world's largest museum and research complex. It's consisted of 19 museums and galleries, the National Zoological Park, and nine research uh, facilities. The Smithsonian Institute is an educational and research institute and associated museum complex administered and funded by the government of the United States and by funds from its endowment. Of the 19 museums and galleries, 17 of these collections are located in Washington, D.C., with 11 of those located on the National Mall. The remaining ones are in New York City and Chantilly, Virginia. The Smithsonian Castle building was begun in 1847 by architect James Renwick, Jr. The castle houses all the administrative offices of the Smithsonian. In the main Smithsonian Visitor Center is also located here and has interactive displays and maps, computers electronically answer most common questions. A crypt just inside the north entrance has the tomb of Jane Smithson, who started the museums. Beautiful gardens surround the castles, both in the front and in the back. As you enter the building, you are greeted with a dedication to James McKim Symington, who held the Office of Membership and Development from 1976 to 1987. James Smithson's Gift the story of a bequest. The Englishman James Smithson's bequest to the people of the United States of America shows the power of a single gift. From one man's estate came the beginnings of the nation's largest museum complex, numerous research facilities, and a range of educational programs. The castle, as it is familiarly known, was built in 1847 and completed in 1855. It is of Romanesque and Gothic architecture. The Red Sandstone Castle was the work of the New York architect James Renwick, as we said. Exiting the back of the castle, we enter into the beautiful, well-maintained gardens. The first monetary bequest came from a lawyer and scientist from Pennsylvania named Hamilton, who left $1,000 to the Smithsonian in 1871. In 1890, Thomas George Hopkins, a businessman, donated $250,000. And with these donations and the monetary donations that people make today, it makes it possible for the Smithsonian to enlarge, increase, and improve their museums. 
Not only was money given to the Smithsonian to expand its museums, but many people left artifacts and collections that could be included and shared with the world. Beside bequests, artifacts, the most important thing that was necessary for the museum to increase its expertise was the volunteer involvement which began in 1850 with as many as 5,000 volunteers donating their time to the institution every year. We will now leave the castle and take a tour of a few of the national museums. The first one that we're going to visit is the National Museum of American History. As one enters the foyer of the museum, you are impressed by the huge representation of the flag of the United States. In a gallery behind that representation is the preservation of the original flag that was flown at Fort Sumter and also the original Star Spangled Banner written by Francis Scott Key. No pictures were permitted in this area. On the second floor was a gallery dedicated to the history and culture of the American people, starting from the early times up to the present. As one enters the President Gallery, we see a statue of President George Washington. It is believed to be the only statue of the President where he is unclothed from the waist up. As one enters the gallery, you are greeted by a plaque and a quotation from Lyndon B. Johnson where he said, The presidency has made every man who occupied it, no matter how small, bigger than he was, and no matter how big, not big enough for all its demands. A special exhibit was there for George Washington, known as the inspiration for the presidency. He was the most respected of all the revolutionary uh, generals and was chosen to lead and preside over the Constitutional Convention. From there, his reputation was beyond reproach and he was asked to become president of the new country. All over the United States, streets have been named after presidents and also license plates do represent them. An election day reminder, people complain about our government, but if you don't vote, you don't count.